Welcome to Business and Investing with Grant and Charlie, where we are enhancing your complete set of skills to build wealth inside and outside your business. Charlie, you and I have always talked about the idea that the more you pay for information, education is usually an indicator of the quality you're going to get back. Do you agree? Disagree? I'll give you the general yes, but not always true. See, and I could go into a long story about how I went to a dodgy laneway in Melbourne last week and had the best $16 meal I've had in a long time. But in general, yes, the premise is true. Well, I was going to sit there. I'm like, if you were to sit there and say categorically, yes, I was going to call BS. Because you know what? There is a YouTube channel and there is a newsletter that I feel as though provides more value than most paid things. Do you know what it is? Mr. Beast? Yep. So Mr. Beast and his feastables. And then the newsletter is <laughs> business and investing. So if you're sitting there and you want to call me out and say, no, that's wrong. It does not add more value than a paid course. I got something for you. Head over to businessandinvesting.com forward slash newsletter. Put in your name and email. Hit subscribe. Receive the emails. Judge it. And if you've got any complaints, it is charlie at businessandinvesting.com. Email him and uh, yeah, we'll send it to the appropriate department. Now, Charlie, let's cue your disclaimer. It's Charlie here from Business and Investing, and I need to let you know that Grant, myself, and the Business and Investing team are in no way, shape, or form qualified to give you personal or specific financial advice. We strongly encourage you seek out and use professionals when you are making investment decisions or comparing investment products. Grant, welcome home. Damn straight. Feet on solid ground for the next two weeks, Charlie. No, I'm joking. It's going to be the next couple of months. I'm in. I'm rocking. I just want to know when you live in such a glorious city like Melbourne, why would you want to leave? <laughs> That's a great, that is actually a great question. No, it's like, I don't know. This is, why not? There's a whole massive world out there. Why not deal with some time zones, carnage and all that kind of fun stuff? Do, do you know great. what? You should play this clip for me in winter next year. Yeah, totally. You know I'll disappear <laughs> to Europe. It's like <laughs> it's, I'll just do the do the six month thing, just swap around. Uh, I, I tell you what, in a, in a series of my life, I really did love the travel thing and being a nomad and being able to work from anywhere. But I am just not built for that anymore. Those time zone challenges, the fatigue. I feel like I would run a business terribly if I tried to be nomadic at this point in my life. See, I just I just live on no sleep and just thoroughly enjoy doing podcasts at godly hours of the day. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Although I will say like a second screen, like a good sizable screen is the one thing I miss. Like if every hotel room just installed good sized screens at the desk in the hotel room, dude, great. Like it'd be a different ball game. But it's like, you're not using that TV for a screen. No matter how many of you digital remote nomads suggest that you do, ain't no chance. That resolution is terrible. That's the stuff that kills me now. And the, to be honest, I'm getting a little bit older. I need that 110% view on Google Docs. I'm not sure I can do. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, I've like zoomed out to like 80%. I'm like, what are you doing? You're younger than me. Uh, well, there's questions to be asked about why I'm not aging as well as I maybe should. Maybe the 10 years of running a business is catching up with me, but we'll, we'll leave that here because I, I've got a topic I want to cover today. I had the most interesting day and I need to talk to you about it. Oh, no. Therapy, all right, lay down. Were you actually involved in this story? You were part of this day, just due to the nature of when we caught up. I couldn't. Oh, tell in that you case, this. yeah, cool. I mean, all right. So, I want, I want, I want to set the stage. Right, is like, it's a, it's a, it was a Saturday, I think. I lose track of days as well. It was a few days ago, anyway. Uh, in the morning, oh, geez, I got to be careful even how I say this bit. I was on TikTok. In the morning, were yeah, I was on caffeinated there. on TikTok. I was. Oh my gosh. And I caught this uh, viral TikTok clip called the $57 lasagna. Now, before we go further, is that not the best title you've heard on a clip in a long time? It is. And I'm still surprised that you use the prime time of caffeination to go death scroll on TikTok. (laughs) It's like, dude, you'd be intermittent fasting with a little bit of caffeine in your body. Ooh, that's the greatest time to do some problem solving (laughs) on TikTok. Grant, I was doing research oh, for yeah, our clients. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dig up. Go on, how, dig how up. How can I be expected to create ads that convert at such a 
outstanding rate and get clients amazing results if I'm not going to spend time on the platform understanding the nature of the platform. Don't give all the business owners an excuse for death scroll on social media. This is the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no, I'm leaning in. I'm going all in on this. Now, across this week, as you see me making requests for uh, ad strategy, I'm like, no, 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 we're changing this this ad. It's the $57 uh, blueprint. Yeah, so it's like the $67 freaking <laughs> So as you see that, you know where it's come from. Anyway, anyway. $57 lasagna. $57 lasagna. Now, um, this clip is, and I'll I'll frame it up really well here. There's a a young girl in the clip and she's in her car. She's like her early 20s. Now, because of the cost of living pressures across the year, she'd made a decision that she was going to start cooking at home more rather than going out to bring down her living costs. This is how she was going to, you know, combat it in this way. Now, the clip itself is she decided to, she wanted to make a lasagna. She went to one of the major sh- supermarkets. I don't know which one. And uh, at the end of it, she's outraged in how much the food cost because it's like it's cost her $57 to make this lasagna. And her conclusion is, well, this is just outrageous and that she's better off eating out. Like how can anyone possibly survive in this world when food costs so much and all these things are coming at her and like, you know, I as well just have McDonald's every day. Like what's the point? The point is that she just doesn't understand. <laughs> so for, I'm, you know what? I'm going to shit all over this. First thing, if you're trying to cut costs, are you going to try and do a recipe that's got 20 different ingredients? Or are you going to go for something that's like, I don't know, tuna and rice, maybe a little bit of eggs, maybe go three with a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe some tomato sauce. I'll give it to you. They're condiments you've already got in your pantry. But a lasagna. Yeah. All right, we're going to go there first. All right, I, 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 we'll go there. So did this person have good intentions? Yes. Strategically and at the execution level, did she do a good job? No, <laughs> like absolutely not. There are YouTube channels and websites dedicated to making tasty meals for under $10. Would she go to like Broad Street for recipe instructions or something? <laughs> just like when- well, do you know the part that broke me? I'm watching the video and she's going through the receipt is like one of the things that can be really expensive is like premium cheese. Oh, yeah, dude. And the whole pack too. Yep. Exactly. So it's very easy to see where this fell out of line is she's picked a dish and then used very expensive ingredients to then put it together and had a whole bunch of stuff like 250 grams of butter. Like who needs 250 grams of butter to make one lasagna? <laughs> Uh, but the point being is that the execution of it, incredibly poor, incredibly poor. So when uh, this young person uh, had that awakening, I I did think for a second though, like what a great opportunity for her to have a bit of like a moment where it's like, well, I need to learn to do this better. Sadly, I don't think she's going to go to one of these YouTube channels for making meals under $10. I feel like she's going to eat McDonald's every day from here, but there was a growth opportunity available to her in that moment. It was, but just imagine what, did you look at the comments? I could just imagine what they were sitting there. They, were all, they would have all just been feeding it, going, yeah, my steak was like 100 bucks a kilo. It's like everyone's just feeding into it. Do you know, I actually feel like I've found the thing I'm supposed to do in life, Grant, as Scroll a Scroll TikTok, got it. <laughs> Scroll TikTok, I love that. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I must say I love people and I love psychology. So it's not just this clip I've watched. I then love reading through the comments and seeing how people are reacting to it. Good. Now, the cesspit. I, so I will say there was a lot of comments and some of them were trying to be helpful with like suggestions of ways you could do a lasagna cheaper, for example. But that was like 1%. What do you think the other 99% of comments were? There would have been hating on society. Like, yeah, too right. It's too expensive. It's complete validation that she's 100% correct. Absolutely. It was outrage and it just put fuel on the fire of like how outraged everyone else is by the cost of groceries, like the, in this circumstance here. And it's like there, there was an opportunity here, right? So this person has had a moment where they've been hit with a cost of living increase and their choice, right, how they're choosing to react to this is like I'm going to find a way to cut costs to deal with this. All right? At no point did it cross her mind, it appears. And I'm being assumptive here, maybe it is. That it's like, well, do you know what? Costs have gone up. Why don't I just earn more? Why don't I find ways to create more value so I can have a $60 lasagna now and not think about it? Or maybe go out and eat at a restaurant and have an even more expensive one if thou so choose. Right? It was a choice in that moment to react to the circumstance, only thinking from how do I shrink? How do I go smaller? And Danger. 
Now, again, I want to, I want to tell you the whole story before we come and dig into this topic a little bit more. So that, that's my morning. I, I'm in there, I'm watching this video and I'm like, oh, like. Oof. Please tell me you went and took the receipt out of the bin for like what Bianca had gone and bought at the shops and you're like, yeah, damn straight. This thing's terrible. We're going to cut our expenses and just like get her to fuel your decisions. Would well, you know the one that gets me occasionally where I, even I'm a bit of sticker shock? Homemade pizza. Right, yes. you can go far with homemade pizza. I like, feel like you're like egging me on on this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like three weeks ago, Hazel and I make a homemade pizza. So here we go. So, wait, wait, wait. Hey, is this the one you actually sent me a photo of? This is the one I sent you the photo of. Oh, amazing. So, <laughs> Hazel and I sit there. We're like, Hazel, like, I want some pizza. And I'm like, you know what? I could go some pizza too. And we've got the great pizza joint that you know below our building. And yeah, it's you like, actually have an outrageously totally. good pizza restaurant under you. Like, <laughs> totally. And I said, I remember I was saying, I'm like, let's make a thing of it. Like, let's do like a date night. We'll go and buy the ingredients and we'll, we'll get everything. I'm like, it's going to cost the same. It's probably be cheaper. Like, whatever. We'll just go and load it up. <laughs> so we went to the supermarket and we just got like the best bases. Like I got like four different types of meat. Like it was just like, it was no expenses barred on this thing. Did you know what the bill was? Did you crack a hundred? Almost. It was like 85 bucks <laughs> for us to make two pizzas. <laughs> it was just, and we were just at this checkout and Hazel just looked at them. She's like, what the hell are we doing? And I was like, well, it's like date night. Like we'll just do whatever we want. And the caveat, there's no alcohol or drinks in that. That, like that's, that, that is just the pizzas. Like that, <laughs> that was it. And I remember I'm like, oh, that seems, seems expensive. <laughs> but not once did I sit there and just go, oh, like let's just not do this. Let's just eat out forever. The one thing that did cross my mind though, Charlie, was holy smokes, I can spend the exact same amount and someone else gets to cook and clean because <laughs> I'm like, I still got to cook this darn thing. <laughs> what, you telling me that wasn't a wonderful date experience? You know what? It was fantastic. It was a bit of fun in that as well. Yeah, like we'll see. It was, it was great, but I'm like, in my mind, it was never, oh my gosh, like the world is burning. It's just like, it's almost like I get the privilege to go and do these things and have these experiences where it's like, well, you get to go out or just cook at home. It doesn't matter what the cost is. It's more about the experience. I, want. I, I know you've used the word privilege there, but I would say for 10 years, you've run a business now in some equivalent and done a lot of the right things to be able to enjoy those experiences. There's a part of like, well, what's the point of working so hard for so many years if you don't get to do some ridiculous things like spend $85 creating a pizza at home? Yes, exactly. Completely, but that that's something where you've got to lean in and enjoy it. You're, it appears, and I mean, I will ask you, but it's not like you had this experience with making that pizza and then you've gone, we're never making pizzas again. Do you know what? I'm eating at McDonald's every day. I'm, I'm actually going to skip a meal tomorrow just to like reduce costs. Totally. It was, it was never the conversation. It was more just the, it was laughing at it. It was just going, I can't believe now we have to cook and clean after spending the amount on a, Outrageous. On a restaurant of pizzas. I will, I will just say South Melbourne market quickly here. You would think, you know, going to the market and being direct and the nature of markets, you know, it's supposed to be cheaper. I'm pretty sure the South Melbourne market is more expensive for me. It is. Dude, I would love to know their profit margins. Like, I'm like, I feel as though they're the ones in the middle who just like eye gouging everyone. And I'm for it. I will pay that price. Yeah, I'll be I'll there help. next Friday. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'll put their kids through <laughs> university. That's fine. But it's like, I agree. <laughs> there are different things that suggest it should be cheaper, but it's not. Right. So see how our reaction to circumstance here is very, very different than this person who's had this moment. Now, I'm not, again, I don't want to poo-poo on this young 20-year-old and the life experience she's had here. Like, I want to completely acknowledge her cost of living's probably gone up. And all the business owners out there that are listening to this podcast, your cost of living has gone up, whether it's utilities, staff, mortgage, rents, food, all of it. But do you think it's going to stop going up? It's just one point, like salaries will continue to increase and the cost of living will just decrease. No. Exactly. So if you look at it in this way, if your only solution in these circumstances is to react with cost of living increase with how do I cut costs to cope with this, you are setting yourself up for a very, very dangerous trajectory where you actually stifle your business because there's going to be people out there that think really differently and they're going to get the wins. And this is where I want to get to the contrast of my day. Right, so this is the morning. I've watched this video. I'm watching the pile on. I'm actually gone. I, I'm a little bit disappointed with this is the direction of society. Like what if all the people in this comment or these comments here 
went from the idea of going, well, do you know what? In, yes, I acknowledge cost of living is getting more and I could watch a great YouTube channel to make meals for $10 or less. But what if I start growing some of my own food and I'm going to try and sell it to my neighbours as well? And like, that's how I'm going to offset some of my cost of living is creating more. Or do you know what? It's like, as much as I don't want to, is I'm going to go and study a little bit more so I can go for a promotion or whatever it is where it was like a abundant thinking around realistically what can be done to improve a situation. If we had a country of people trying to create more rather than people trying to cut costs, that's going to be a very, very different reaction. Now, anyway, that's my morning. Coming back to this, right, you and I caught up in the afternoon. Right, and um, I could I could see you already smiling because you're like I know where this is going now. Well, I won't read I know where this story's going. You and I caught up with someone who, in the last three years, from scratch, I will add here, has made ten million dollars. Yep. And dude, first thing out of his mouth was fifty seven dollar lasagnas. <laughs> it's like this is outrageous. <laughs> Hey, that's a great question in itself. Do you think a guy that makes that amount of money in that amount of time or ourselves is sitting there debating the $57 lasagna? No. It was a great conversation though that we had. Interesting, right? Now I would make the case that um, knowing a fair bit about this person and their lifestyle, their cost of living would have gone up substantially as well. I know categorically that it has, yes. <laughs> like <laughs> significantly. But look at the outcomes. Look at the way this person is going, cool. Uh, and I dare say there's some uncomfortable moments when they're looking at their living costs going, yeah, this be expensive. But the reaction to that is how do I do more? How do I create more? How do I go bigger? And I just think there's such power in this story and thinking about that for the average business owner. And, and maybe take this as a moment, right? Do a bit of a check-in in yourself. Is like, how are you reacting to these things? Mm. Are you in this cost-cutting mode? Are you trying to reduce... Because, and again, going to the consequence, if you're doing that while your competition is going, how do I create more? A year from now, they're going to eat you. T- totally. Especially because one layer that I've spoken to a few business owners more recently that are trying to sort of stand by the wayside and let this pass. What is it like the saying of like this too shall pass? And then they're like, get back in and they go, ah, oh, cool, now we'll go for growth. And the the thing that I say to them is like, do you really think that it's going to fundamentally change one in the short term, but two in the long term? Like what if this was just the new normal? What if the way that you were playing business for the last five, 10 years doesn't apply in this next five, 10 year period? Like are you just going to sit there and wait for five or 10 years or try and decrease your expenses to actually continue eating and making profit versus just going, oh, this is just different. I have to play this different. Do uh, you, you know what I think about here? This is how you end up one of those people that just always talks about the good old days, All right? This is how you end up one of those people that it's like, ah, oh, you know, Back you remember the early 2000s? Yeah. We were, uh, we were affiliate marketing arbitrage on Google AdWords. Like those yeah. were the days. Yeah, when I bought Bitcoin. At, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. This is like you're literally signing off of and saying like, I'm never going to do better from here. Yep. Instead of looking at it as an opportunity of going like, what don't I know? Because now it's like what I don't know cost me money. It's like, great. It's just, it is the opportunity to try and solve the situation I'm in a different way. Do you acknowledge there's been change though? Would you sit here and go, the environment realistically has changed? And I mean, from how we do business, you could uh, argue AI potentially coming in and changing some things, how we work on the internet, uh, even within the specifics of the advertising agency we run, right? A year ago, things were different in advertising than they are today. Would you would you agree or disagree with that? 100%. Like, look at how we changed the business. <laughs> like we, we acknowledge it is different. Well, we, to be honest, that's because I felt like this. I felt like if we stuck with what we were doing and didn't evolve, we were going to be those people that were going through like, how do we do this cheaper? How can we bring in more cost-cutting measures? And we would be limiting the potential of what we've done at, at Case in point, I mean, not to toot our own horn or to come across toot there it, is- Toot it, toot it, Well, I would rather fail having a crack at trying to pull off something um, bigger and creating more than be successful in being the world's best pessimist. <laughs> yeah. Put that on a bumper sticker and stick it out on the back of your car. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> it just doesn't add value in that way. No, it doesn't. And- I, I completely agree. But to that point, right, like there is a time, a point in time of you making sure that your expenses are in check. 
right? Like it's, and, and I've seen businesses do this various different ways. Like I've seen business owners print off the credit card expenses and highlight things that they want to cancel every single month. Um, and I've seen massive businesses that just do a huge project over a year or five years of reducing overhead significantly because they become so bloated. Like there is a point in time when that's important. I totally concur. I have no problem at all with someone sitting down with their accountant or bookkeeper every three months doing an expensive review and going, is there a better way to do this? Completely. But those people who do that very strategically or in like that strategic sense are spending more of their time going, how do we expand? How do we approach this economy differently, this environment differently? And how do we continue growing the business? Like very few businesses that are continue to be successful are sitting there saying, how do I just not increase top line revenue? And how do I just retain and maintain profits by decreasing expenses? <laughs> like it's almost a death by a thousand cuts. Like you're not going to get where you're looking for. I concur. But even in the way you've set that up in your mindset, you're literally only looking for a way to reduce cuts so you can spend it on growth. Yeah. Like you're not doing what... it to cope with the, hey, my rent's gone up or I just spent $57 on a lasagna. <laughs> totally. And interestingly enough, like a lot of these people, um, when they do the big cost cutting projects, is because they've come off years of focusing it on pure scale and growth. And so all they've done was bloat a delivery team and a scale team to the point of, okay, well, there's a huge amount of profits for us just to optimize this. Let's go and spend a bit of time optimizing it. And then let's go and grow again. Now, noting, right, if you rewind the clock, and I think both of us have been doing business for about 10 years now, have to be close to it. Um, in those early years, I know for myself, I operated very differently because, well, basically there wasn't a lot in my, you know, in my story, I go back and I'm not going to say it again. I've said it too many times on the podcast, but like I brought some pretty crappy money beliefs to business. And I was absolutely this person to be clear is like, I was always trying to reduce costs and spend less at the expense of my business and its growth. How did you approach this when it came to business? Were you like always abundantly thinking on how can I grow or did you have to make changes within yourself? So this was interesting and and it was like an awareness piece that I'd only gained after looking back. So I'll set this up. My skill set is delivery, like systems, processes, optimization, like that's where I naturally do very well. And so when you have a skill set like that, most of the time it's a hammer and just looking for a nail. And so I go, well, in order for us to increase profitability, I just start automating things. I start systemizing it so that delivery costs can decrease without impacting the quality of what we deliver. And that's naturally how I delivered it. Do you know what? I've never thought about that. In nature, there is a very much like a reductive strategy behind success. How do we do it cheaper? Totally. And so if you think about it, like the skill set that I had when I first started my SEO company was being able to do SEO, which meant that the expansion of sales and marketing that I was doing was based off the outputs of SEO that I was doing on the company, right? So the more that I spent on improving our delivery, it it would suggest that I should then increase the amount of leads that I get, which then I would be able to sell. Now, the challenge with that was if I had my time again, I should have gone back and said, this is the perfect time for me to master sales. This is the perfect time for me to start learning and mastering paid ads because that is actually the better way for me to expand the business as opposed to just doing what I know. And I'll, I'll expand this on. A lot of technicians being business owners like a plumber opens a plumbing business and watch paid, yourself. <laughs> uh, someone who's good at paid ads opens a paid ads business. And yeah. like essentially we open businesses based on our skill set which means that when we try and solve a problem, which is, okay, the environment's different now, we try and solve it with our level of expertise. Instead of going, what don't I know and how do I learn what I don't know, which in most of the business owners is like sales and marketing, unless you're literally offering services of, sale, of sales and marketing, <laughs> right, is to go, I need to get better at sales and marketing because that is what's going to help increase it. And so this was an epiphany that I had more recently of like looking back over my business journey of just going, the one thing that would have served me better when uh, places like the Philippines and India were coming out with SEO agencies, which means it became more of a commodity and it became cheaper, was just me going, not how do I deliver better? How do I just get in front of more people and sell in more people? (laughs) Which is the same amount of effort, just put in a different position. 
I've got well, points and questions I want to ask you. This is really interesting because um, I will say one of the things that continually has me thinking bitter, bigger is that I get a lot of exposure to seeing inside other people's business. Ditto, yeah. Like just last week I saw a business in the safety niche, right? So they do like uh, workplace safety. Doing a million dollars a month of profit. It's like what? I was, I was, I was, so how can you not think abundantly when you see that? How can you not think bigger when you see that? It's like, if you think you do a million dollars a month in there, well, I can do, there's 10 in my industry. Um, or the other idea of like, we get to um, see exposure to the amount of leads and businesses that need our help that are still spending money on advertising. So, and I wonder, do I have an influence on you in that way? Do you think the exposure to all the things I'm like, I think every time I get an interesting lead or do an interesting like, account or I bring you, I'm like, oh my God, I've just seen this. Totally. And, but then on my side, I've also seen a lot of organizations that have struggled through it, which are like, this is like doing advertising is a new way or like paid ads is a new way that they're thinking about growing. And so when I get a sneak peek into, well, what were you doing up until this point? And it's like, wow, that's a, that's a house of cards. Like you have hit the ceiling of this. Like there is no way for you to grow outside of what you've got from your friends, family, network, et cetera. Like you, you are now thinking differently. And so seeing a lot of these businesses hit a glass ceiling based on their level of expertise and knowledge has been the other side of awareness outside of you seeing a whole heap of these yourself of me just going, holy smokes, like I, I didn't realize that my solution of delivery was better delivery years ago that I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know when it shifted. It just shifted at some point to just go, well, what if I just went for expansion instead of optimization of delivery? No, I and think that you, was I think you have to. I don't yeah. think it's, I, there is no option in this, right? I look at it and go, cost cutting will only take you so far. And perceivably on the surface for a while, it might work really well at making you more profitable. You have that time. It could be a year of you're more profitable and you feel like things are okay. But it's the when your competition gets around you and they've been focused on growth, they're going to crush you because they've been thinking on expansion. They, they really, really have. And I just think. Yeah, I, I, I feel as though that is the lens. And just to sort of re-articulate my point, I think that it just comes back from a layer of like if, if I was a plumber and I'm really good at putting in toilets, like it's going to take me – another three years of trade school to learn how to be good at sales and marketing, which is just not true, <laughs> right? But it's like, so it's easier for me to get better at putting in toilets than it is for me to learn a completely new skill of sales and marketing. What would you do if you're someone who potentially has been listening to this podcast and goes, I'm thinking too much about waiting and cost cutting. I'm not being expansive and I'm not looking at how I can do more. What would you say to them? Yeah, so the first thing I'd say to you, Charlie, is to stop looking at TikTok for $57 lasagnas and people complaining about it being too expensive and start watching TikTok of like Salt Bay where people are paying like 15 grand for a restaurant meal and you sitting there going, how do I get that? <laughs> like that's, that is expansionary thinking for you. <laughs> Touche, all right? I've, I'll delete the app after this, all right? It's... <laughs> Um, but but to your point, right? Like it is the understanding that the way that you have got here is not all the way that you're going to get there. Like times have changed. Do you know what? I was actually outraged on the weekend. I went to McDonald's to get Jack a 30 cent cone. <laughs> 80 cents. Hang on, with a flake or no flake? No flake, just 80 cents for a, a cone. I used to be able to go sub a buck with a flake when I was a kid. There was like, it, was the greatest, it was the greatest 50 cents with that flake. But you know what I'm not going to do? It's trying to cut costs in the business or my <laughs> lifestyle to be able to afford that 80 cent flake. I'm going to create more. No, no, I'd be cutting it, mate. You can't afford that. All right, so to re reiterate your point before I've really cut you off there, you're saying being careful of the intake of information. Completely. Like you are a product of your environment. Like just imagine the people in that comment section of that video, the type of other videos that are getting recommended by those social media platforms of other people complaining about cost of living. <laughs> and you just go, great. Now you just become a product of your environment versus like, man, like I was in the States with like one of the guys was doing $100 million a year of M&A activities in a business and another guy was doing $500 million a year in revenue. Wait, and I'm how, like, <laughs> how, did that, how did that make you feel? But this is the thing. It was like, I literally walked away with Hazel and she's like, what are you and Charlie doing? <laughs> Ouch. 
<laughs> and it's like, and I just sit there and I just go, well, this is awesome. And it's not that they're smarter. It's not that they're significantly older. It's not like, it's just like one of the guys literally just like me, like same age, same everything. It's just cool, man. I've just been doing this and I've just been seeing all these different things. And this is how I'm playing the game. So same to your story with our, our friend that over three years made 10 million bucks. It's like, great. Like those, those are the people. That you After just that hang experience, with. tell me you weren't doing the same. My entire evening. I was consumed of thinking what I could do to make ten million dollars in the next year after that because I, I, I'm so impressed by him. I really am. Did it? It was one of the things that I walked away and I'm like, this is one of the sides. And I think I messaged you on Slack. It's like, I'm like, how do people not have a relationship like you and I have and that we have with some of our people in our, in our network where it's just so expansionary, but it's so sharing and honest and open of just going like, cool, like this is how we're playing the game. Well, this is where I think networking gets a miss it gets mispriced in the real value of it right because many people will think of networking as an example of like well how am i you know what's the direct roi like what am i selling into my network to justify its worth where it's like well what's the cost in not having a network that's just doing good shit totally if you just hang around people that are ambitious and hungry rather than watching tiktok videos on a saturday morning <laughs> I love it. Uh, we'll leave that one there, shall we? Uh, but the point being is those types of influences make a huge difference, a massive complete, difference. Completely. And it's, yeah, if people put the same amount of time into it, and I, I will put a caveat to this, uh, the guy that we caught up with, one of his biggest assets is his ability to adapt to change. Like he's like, if I'm not changing, I'm falling behind. And I think that a lot of people who have come to this point, like that girl making the $57 lasagna, was hoping that for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years of her life, nothing will change. And it's like when you know that everything around you will forever change, like the cost of living is always going to go up. Just expect it. It's just the second that you acknowledge and just expect that, hey, like things aren't always going to be the same. Then you go, I've got the opportunity to solve this. This is another opportunity for me to change and me to evolve as opposed to the only way that I'm going to be successful is if shit doesn't change. Should we wrap this one from here? I feel like that was a great point. Hey, wait, we're going to finish on one of my points. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Mean- I feel privileged. I'm like, this is- wait, I'll even do you a solid. That's it for the episode. Get on the email list. Is it my birthday? I feel like it's my birthday. <laughs> Head over to businessandinvesting.com forward slash newsletter. Put in your name and email. Hit subscribe and we'll notify you every single time we come out with one of these episodes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Charlie. We'll catch you on the next episode.